Hey, I'm live. I can tell because there's a little counter that says I've been online for six seconds now. Let's see if anyone shows up to this thing. Because I've never done this before. Hi, YouTube. Good morning. I'm going to start pressing buttons because I have no idea what's happening here. I can click the share button. I can click on... Hey, there's eight people here. Hi, everyone. I don't know. Are you commenting? Top chat, live chat, all messages are visible. What happens if I press it this way? Nope, let's leave it over here. Now there's six people I lost to. <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. I am so sorry, I've not done this before, so I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing here. Hey, Isaac, how you doing, bud? Okay, so that's how this works. Your comments pop up right there on the screen. Oh, that's cool. Greg, how you doing, man? <sighs> Sorry, got a little bit darker. Not as well lit over on this side, are we? No, I'm not liking that at all. Oh, Larry, you're more than welcome, dude. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> hey, I apologize for how cruddy this is. I'm not done... Um, a live stream from my phone before so I've got all these buttons that I have like no idea what they do <laughs> so I'm trying trying to figure this out but you guys can hear me okay well you're responding to me so I guess it must yeah no maybe anyone out there yes Isaac cool man sweet um yeah I don't really know what I'm, what I'm uh what I'm doing here I'm just uh I'm in Madison Wisconsin at the moment uh, we're playing tonight um, at this cool street festival called Taste of Madison. Um, I guess all these like rock bands pretty much come over and play. Hold on. I didn't put my phone on silent. That's horrible. Hey, Christopher, how you doing, man? What in the world is going on? <laughs> this is like the worst live stream ever. Okay, phone's on. Do not disturb. Riddick Spirit. I like it, man. Paris. Dang, I've always wanted to go to Paris. One of these days I'm going to make it there. Not yet. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, I'm on tour at the moment uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. We play tonight, and I've got a little bit of time to kill, and I thought it would be cool to try uh, um, documenting uh, my travels uh, with these like tour vlogs or something like that, because why not? It's kind of fun. Um, so uh, I don't, like I said, I don't really have anything planned. Um, Hey, also, actually, let me, let me say this really quick. Did you guys check out the video that just went live uh, about an hour ago on the uh, the Enki um, AMG2? Did you guys see that yet? Atlanta. You know, Atlanta's not on the docket yet, but it will be, I guarantee you. Hey, Alexander, nice to meet you, man. Actually, I'm going to be in Germany in October. October 6th. I'm going to Weimar. Weimar? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Are you around? Is that close to where you are? Maybe, maybe not. Sorry, like I said, I'm figuring this whole thing out. What happens if I touch the screen? Oh, it focuses on me. Oh, that's good. Wait, well, let me let me actually start. Um, let me tell you guys a little secret. Um, Munich. Oh, that's a bit far. That's all right. I'll come to Munich one of these days. So um, check this out. For, for those of you who fly in the States, what base you took for these tours. Actually, you know what? I can show you. Uh, I, I mentioned a second ago about this uh, video that just went live. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm in the hotel room and I got to move things around. It's kind of small in here. Does this button rotate my camera? Oh, it totally does. Awesome. Okay, so I did a review video on this case here called the Enki AMG2. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, go, it literally just went live like maybe an hour ago, maybe not even. Um, so it's this really rad freaking, yeah, dude, uh, it's so freaking cool. Hey, Alan, nice to see you, man. Uh, but so the two bases that I use on, on these shows are uh, my M-Base MJ4 and my Gibson Grabber. Um, I'm so sorry, I just covered up the camera. Yeah, so this base here, uh, you probably see in a, like the majority of my videos. It's my go-to. I just love the sound of a J-Base. And it's hot rodded with uh, those Aguilar. I don't remember which ones these are. I think they're the 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 AG60s. 
Um, and then this one, <laughs> this, is, this is one of my favorite instruments because of just how bad it sounds, actually. It's a really trashy sounding instrument. And the majority of the stuff we do um, is like drop C, you know, so this is just a nasty, kind of sounds like a P bass, but it's uh, more mid-rangey. The thing's 100% maple. So it's just got a really cool sound. It takes to distortion and effects and all that stuff pretty well. Yeah, yeah, Isaac, it really does, man. So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, this stays in drop D, and this one stays in drop C. Uh, the, the, the artist I'm touring with, it's all hard rock stuff, so those two bases get it done, but this case is so freaking awesome, dude. Um, I know I keep talking about it, but, uh, yeah, got, got all my gear here in exactly the amount of time I needed it. Perfectly safe, so I definitely, definitely recommend it if you can get your hands on one. I know it's new, so he actually might, they might be in like pre-production or they might not have them all ready yet, but probably they're taking pre-orders and that kind of stuff. But So those are the two bases that I'm taking out, Isaac, um, to answer your question. Um, do you guys have any other questions? Do I have effects pedals? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, but no, I don't. Let me, actually, let me explain. This is kind of cool, but... First, I gotta turn on my computer. Hold on one second. Uh, you might dig this, you might not. Some of you might think this is really cool. Some of you might think this is really lame. Um, hold on, I gotta open up the right session. Okay, so check this out. So this is actually my pedal board. And I know what most of you are thinking, there's no pedals on it. Actually, there are. The pedals are inside. Say, Nick Erz. Oh, you're horrible. <laughs> you are horrible. <laughs> I'll let that slide. Uh, so anyways, all of the, uh, all of the, um, uh, all the pedals are inside here. And so I can't stomp on them. They're all, uh, th th this is, an, is on a case that's side of stage. So like if I'm playing right here, this is over there where that TV is, you know? Um, so inside here, there's a wireless, that line six wireless unit. Uh, the source audio aftershock in the back there's a few Aguilar pedals. I don't know. I'll do I'll do a proper video on this one of these days. Um, but pretty much everything gets controlled with Ableton Live because you know like so much of what we do these days is all to track. So if I hit like a brand new war, I don't know if you heard that, but there was a clicking button. So all these pedals that I used for that song just turned on. You know, and if I go to the next song, uh, Riptide. You know, same thing, all the all the pedals just changed. And uh, actually, if the song is played to a track, um, I have it, sorry, I'm gonna turn around. I have it programmed so that, uh, you know, at the verse, the distortion turns on, at the chorus, the compression turns on, because everything's laid out to a timeline, you know? Um, so it's actually kind of cool. Uh, it makes it so that I don't have to do any stomping, and it's the reason why I can you know, not have to stop, uh, leave it off to the side of the stage. I don't have to get to it because everything just kind of, oh, let's turn this back around. Uh, everything just kind of works on its own, you know? Uh, it's actually, yeah, it, it's actually pretty cool. So I could be anywhere on stage and my effects will turn on and off. Um, and actually I even have a mute switch in there because in this band I also play bass and keys. I need to make a video. Yes, I definitely, I definitely will, will <laughs> make a video on how to do that. Um, but I also have a, a, like I was saying, a, a mute pedal so that when I go between playing bass and keys, um, you know, if I've got two hands on the keyboard, then my bass is rumbling. <laughs> you know, there's nothing muting it. So I'll automate the bass to turn off um, when I go to the keyboard. And then when I bring my hands back to the bass and start playing bass again, uh, you know, then my bass is live again and the keyboard's muted and that kind of stuff, you know? Hey Marcel, thank you so very much, man. I'm I'm honored. Thank you. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're you're digging all the stuff, dude. Uh, but yeah, so I, that's on. Oh Isaac, yeah. <laughs> no 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 apologies. Thank you so much, man. Um, but yeah, so I, I definitely will do a video. It's been on my list of things to do uh, to show how I have this pedal board set up and wired and all that stuff. And actually, you know what? This is probably uh, one of my favorite things about it is uh, this case um, is called. Shoot. Now, the name's not on it, but it's an SKB thing called, I, I think it's called the Flyer. Um, and so it's actually, this is a carry-on item. This fits in the overhead compartment. What it really is, is it's a two-rack space uh, thing for, like, 
producers and stuff, you know, so you can get two rack units in here and take it as a carry-on item. I just gutted it. You can see, like, there's power supply and everything in the back and then all the pedals, you know. So uh, the, the, the cool thing is, is when you're going through TSA, any of you guys bring a pedal board with you through TSA before? You ever had to do that? You're traveling with, uh, you're trying to take all these pedals on, on board with you? What effect do I use the most? I'll get to that. Um, well, anyways, when you're going through TSA and, and you've got a pedal board, it looks like a bomb, dude. You've got all these wires connected, all these uh, knobs and, and boxes and stuff. Um, and so, you, you know, getting to bring it as it, like, as it is, it's just you can't access it. Um, everything's hidden underneath, and uh, it just goes through TSA much quicker rather than having to check it. Because then when you get to, uh, get to your destination, you open up your pedal board, and everything's in disarray. Your pedals are all in a different spot. The wires are all unplugged because, you know, TSA went through it. So if I can, I like to keep those things with me um, on my person, and that way uh, I can just make it to the airport a lot quicker. Um, I'm trying to see where you guys – oh, here's where your comments are. Okay, uh, I am so sorry. I do not know how to pronounce your name. It starts with Argan, uh, and it says, what is the effect that you use the most? I would honestly say compression. For like most gigs, it would be compression. For this one, it happens to be distortion. But I keep everything very simple. I have an overdrive and a distortion sound. And a compressed sound for when I do slappy stuff or uh, whatever. Or I just want a more even tone. An EQ. <laughs> that's really it. EQ, compression, and overdrive. Uh, if I'm doing a rock or a pop gig, that's pretty much all I need. Um, I've also got, what else is in there? There's a chorus pedal, which I use sometimes, and there's a looper in there as well. But, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, AJ, will you review your own custom bass? Yeah, um, I wanted to let the dust settle because uh, uh, Gregor at Bass the World did a whole feature video on it. Um, which pretty much went over everything that needs to be said about it, uh, other than, you know, just me having now spent some time with it, playing on it. Um, so yes, I will do a proper video at thebasis.net. It just hasn't happened yet. Uh, let's just keep going down the line here. Like how you scaled your rig. I'm sorry. Look like you scaled the UR rig door this show. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really know what you're saying, AJ, if you can rephrase that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer it for you. Uh, what do you think about Japan bases from the 870s and 80s? I don't think I've played one. Uh, are you talking about like the, um, uh, the, 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 the lawsuit um, Ibanez? Like, is that what you're talking about? Like, like the Ibanez P base ripoff or J base ripoff? I have played some of those. Uh, what engine are you using on the Aftershock? Elias, that's a great question, dude. Let's find out. Uh, the cool thing about the Aftershock, if you guys don't know, I'm sorry if I'm screwing the screen up right now, is uh, you can control it from a computer. And this is the reason why I'm able to automate it. Oh, shoot, not that button. Uh, this is the reason why I'm able to uh, have it turn on and off during the set is because all these settings can change. So, for instance, when I'm playing a song like, actually this is a great example, so this, this one's called Riptide, and it's like a, a germanium muffin, that's the one that they call it on here. Um, and that distortion engine is, uh, you know, this is like, I call this overdrive. It's not full on crunchy distortion, it's just a little hot. And you can see I also always blend in some of the clean mix, so you don't lose your low end. Uh, but then on a song like this this one here called War, this one's like Nine Inch Nails Distortion. All right, so for this one, I go the Germanium. All these settings are the same, but then it also goes into this one called Smoked Glass. And same thing, uh, you know, the clean mix is still in there, but this one's just a crunchy, nasty distortion. So it's this one going into this one. So these are pretty much my two main settings. This is the overdrive. And then for this one, it's overdrive going into these settings. And that's just like my super distortion. Um, and again, I don't, because that, that pedal is right here. I can't access it when I'm playing. So those settings change automatically um, throughout the song. Uh, so I could, I could adjust them if I needed to. But like I said, I like to keep things really easy. I have an overdrive sound. I've got a crunchy, dirty sound. 
and then compression. That that's pretty much it. Um, sorry, let's keep going down here. Isaac, message retracted. You must have sent something horrible. Uh, what is your gauge for your high C? I'm assuming you're talking about on the custom base. Um, and I'm going to say it's 30. 30 or 35. I don't have it with me right now. Um, but yeah, I think I, it's, it's either a 30 or a 35. Um, oh, you scaled down your board. Yes. Yes, AJ. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't play with a huge elaborate pedal board anymore. I pretty much just play with these. Um, not that I have anything against playing with pedals. Um, it, on it, honestly, it came down to money. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but in 2015, I went through cancer with my wife. Uh, she had stage four lymphoma, so I sold close to everything I own just to be able to afford cancer. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an expensive one. So I sold a lot of studio equipment, a lot of pedals, some bases, just like pretty much anything in my possession that hadn't been touched in like three or four months, it went out the window. So for like two years, the only thing I used was a base, a base and a DI. That's it. I didn't use any pedals because I had to get rid of them all. Um, and so when I started touring, I started bringing back them back in and I just went with the, the essentials, whatever I needed, because um, otherwise, yeah, it gets really costly, as I'm sure you notice. Sorry, guys, I'm just going down these in the order I get them. Uh, 80s Japanese bases are awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like I said, the um, the Ibanez knockoffs that I've played were great. I actually have a friend who collects them, uh, and he's got a whole bunch of, I mean, not just the J bases, but a lot of that stuff. He's way into it, so, yeah, I, I definitely dig it. Um, sorry. Okay, uh... Again, Argan, I'm so sorry, but it says, I don't understand the actual role of a compressor. What is it and how do you use it? Um, compression is, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm doing this on my phone. Am I moving this thing around too much? Are, are, you, are you guys getting dizzy watching me? Should I set the phone down? Like I said, I haven't done one of these before, so I'm working on it. You can let me know. It's okay. I won't take offense. <laughs> uh, what question was I answering? Shoot, I need to hit the button again. I should prepare for this next time. Nah, it's okay. All right, awesome. Good, good, good. Um, oh, the actual role of compression. So compression is a dynamics um, taming uh, tool. So um, it squashes down your dynamic range, meaning your louds aren't too loud and your quiets aren't too quiet. Um, and, and it serves two different purposes. As an inexperienced player, if, you're, if your picking technique is sloppy, meaning... Um, I don't have a bass to show you, but if you're playing da 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 ba -ba 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 -ba, like some of your notes are popping out and others are getting kind of, uh, you know, covered by the other instruments, which we don't want to happen on a bass. We want the low end to be smooth and pretty much even throughout. If you listen to a record and you go from song to song to song to song, you're never going, oh man, the bass, like I can't hear it. Or it got too loud and then it got too quiet. Usually the bass stays the same all the way through. It's that foundational thing. Um, and, and we can get that via compression. If, again, if you're not an experienced player and your left hand can't play consistently, compression can help you do that. So that's using compression as a, as a tool to fix a problem, but it's also a tone shaping tool. Um, so you can use compression to just get a really smooth, really cool sounding tone, even though you can get close to that with your fingers, it won't be the same without compression. So it's just, it, it's another effect. It's a very smooth, even sound. Um, that can be great or it can be awful. So it totally just depends on, on the song. I'm sorry, it, it, there's way more to it than that. Compression and EQ, that's, uh, you can spend four years studying that stuff at, a, at sound school, you know? <laughs> so uh, that's the skinny of it. Um, let's see, uh, thanks for the answer, Jamie. I use those two engines a lot too. Yeah, dude, I think it's great. That Source Audio pedal, here's the reason why I think it's so cool. And I'm not trying to make this a commercial for them. They're not paying me. Uh, but the thing that's rad about it is it's one pedal, right? So it takes up one spot on your pedal board. It takes up one uh, power supply, but it's got two engines in it, right? So I can use that as an overdrive and as a distortion or as an overdrive going into a distortion because it's digital, so you can route it within the pedal differently. So for one pedal, you actually get two different sounds or three if you run the two of those sounds into each other, you know? So yeah, I think it's a rad pedal. I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't work without it. Uh, do you do any synth bass live? Yes. Yes. Um, I play keys in this band. So um, piano, synth, synth bass, 
and strings. Those are the types of effects we use. And I do it all on plugins. So same thing, the laptop is running Ableton Live. So when we're doing a song that has piano, the piano patch pulls up. I automate the keys the same way I automate my pedals. And then the next song starts with strings. So as soon as I press play on the song, my strings patch pulls up. And so um, I don't use a physical keyboard. It's a MIDI controller and all the sounds are on my laptop. I believe I use Native Instruments Complete. If you've heard of that, it's a great, great product. Um, let's keep going down here. What do you think about Hadrian Ferro? Oh my God. Actually, you know what? I feel bad, um, but I'm gonna share a story with you guys. Uh, I was 20 years old, 21, something like that. I was young and it was my first time going to NAM. If you know what the NAM show is, it's a big event that happens in Anaheim. I'm in Los Angeles, so it's like an hour and a half drive for me. Uh, and so my first time going to the NAM show, I was just blown away at all the music, all the players, and it was so cool. And I go to the Fodera booth, and I hear this kid play. He was young. And he's not too much older than me, I don't think. We're, we're probably similar in age. But I called him the French Devil because he was just this tiny, skinny kid, and he just destroyed the bass guitar. And um, I had been at the NAMM show for like three or four hours, and I'm going to all these different booths, and I'm like, oh man, this is cool, this is great. I played at the M-Bass's booth, it was John's first year going. And I was like, this is so much fun, this is awesome. Then I go to the Fodera booth, and I hear Hadrian play, and I'm like, I quit, I quit, I'm going home, and I did. I drove home immediately after hearing him play at the booth, because I was like, I can't, I just, I just can't, I can't touch that. I can't, I'm, just, I'm done with the bass guitar. And I honestly didn't play for like two days, because he was so good. It's so good. Normally, and this isn't jealousy, this isn't anything. It was just like, he, he was so fast and so clean that I just, I had to take a, a break and go, okay, I need to regroup and, and learn how to do what he's doing. So uh, so that's what I think of Hadrian. He's fantastic. Um, I've met him a handful of times, but we haven't hung out. But I would, dude, I would love to get that guy on my podcast or, or yeah, just chat with him, interview him or something like that. Um, anyone checked out the podcast yet? Anyone here? I'm having a lot of fun doing that, man. That's so cool. Uh, okay, keep going down. What does this say? Wow, oh my God, that's sad. I'm sorry. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the cancer thing. Yeah, uh, she's uh, she's been in remission for three years, uh, going strong. So um, thanks, AJ. I appreciate that, man. Uh, I love FJN and Samic are awesome because they build out. Oh, I see. Yeah, the Japanese stuff. Yeah, yeah, they're great too, man. Okay, Isaac's question. Um, all the touring, clinics, techniques, style of music, and exercise. I'm assuming you're talking about physical exercise. Do you upload more videos on your website, The Bassist? Can you talk more about your website and what can find? Yeah, so TheBassist.net um, obviously houses all of the free content that I'm doing here on YouTube, uh, but it also houses, uh, I don't know, another four or 500 videos that are for subscribers only. So. I'm in the midst right now uh, doing an entire curriculum called the Bassist Curriculum. Actually, you know what, let me, um, I'm sorry guys, I'm not trying to make this a commercial, uh, but you asked, so I'm gonna give it to you, hold on. So here at the Bassist.net, if I go under videos, um, right here, I'm still working on it. Uh, the Basics, this is a free YouTube course that just went live a couple weeks ago. I'm sure most of you have seen pieces of it. Uh, but then, like, so when you first sign up for thebasis.net, like, this is the curriculum. You learn the basics, you learn how to practice, you start working on scales and arpeggios, you work on your rhythm and timing, you work on groove. Again, this is another YouTube series that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. You learn music theory, and you learn how to read. Um, and so I set it up that way because that's exactly how I would teach a brand new student. I would go over all those things in that order. And then from there... So I'm going to switch it back around. Uh, once, like, if you can do all of this stuff, then we start getting into extracurricular, um, you know, and this is all included at the basis, more advanced stuff like sweep arpeggios and whatnot, learn how to play chords. Uh, you, you know, you just have access to, like, all of the different things that, um, that I've done, uh, not just the free stuff on YouTube. So that's really the, the difference. Oh, geez, where's that button again? Uh, that's really the difference between my YouTube channel and the basis.net. This is a lot, a lot more content. Um, and a uh, uh, portion of the tuition goes to CharityWater.org, which is an awesome charity, a great organization. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, AJ, do you use your comp in front still? 
I like it in the rear. You know what? Um, in that pedal board video that you're referring to, um, I had like two or three compressors. I love compression. It's one of my favorite effects. Um, this time I'm using just one and it's towards the end. Yeah, uh, it's not up top. Um, I don't remember why I did it that way. Usually I like, uh, if you EQ first and then compress, you can kind of undo some of the EQ moves that you did because, uh, you know, like imagine I just dipped it 500. When I'm squashing my sound, so I'm kind of bringing that dip back up again. Not really, but really. Um, so I think it's better to compress first, then do your EQ moves and your shaping so that you're taking a compressed sound and then you're accentuating or, you know, dipping frequencies or, or whatever. So actually, in this case, I think my compressor is pretty close. It probably goes octaver and then compression. I'm gonna have to double check, but I think that's how it, and, and that's actually the drag about having my pedal board in this case, is if I wanna rewire stuff, nah, it's a drag, dude, it's a pain in the ass. So I, I will be doing a video on it, maybe in the next couple weeks. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find you a real answer on, on where that's at. Uh, compressor is a world of its own. Yeah, it really is, man. Argan, you're very, very welcome. Do you prefer passive basses? Yes, I do. In fact, all of my active basses have a switch on them to turn it off, <laughs> so I rarely use the active function for no other reason than what if the battery goes live on, I'm sorry, what if the battery goes dead while I'm on stage? Well, that'd just be a pain in the ass, you know? Um, so, and I know, yeah, you can fix that by just changing your batteries before shows. Dude, I've got eight batteries to replace on the wireless packs. No. Yeah, I know, four batteries there, and then I'm the tour manager for this band, so I have to change batteries on all of their guitars, on all of their wirelesses, and on top of whatever else. Like, I just, man, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so I, I choose passive basses just for the sake of it being easier um, and, you know, just having less stuff to work with. Um, Shane says, I've listened to the podcast. Dude, thank you, man. Um, I'm having so much fun doing that, uh, which is funny because I haven't, well, I mean, they're not interviews, they're just conversations, but I haven't had any basses on yet, which actually, um, my first one is gonna be Norm Stockton. I don't know if you guys know Norm. Um, played with Lincoln Brewster, he's got his own solo career. Dude's just, he's a freaking heavy hitter, man. Norm Stockton, he's one of my favorite bass players. And so I'm actually gonna have him on the show, I think, in about a week? No, 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 not a week, no, no, because I'm not even home for a month. Sometime in October, Norm's gonna be on, on the podcast. Um, he's a great dude, yeah, so I can't wait for you guys to check that out. Um, AJ says, your old video, uh, you had like layers of different comps depending on different places. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's, that's why I like compression. Um, uh, you know, I would have different compression settings for different effects that I'm trying to achieve. Whereas now with this board, I just need the one effect. I don't need to have a whole bunch of stuff at my disposal. Sitting in a hotel room, must be on the road with who? Um, his name is Shim Moore. Shim used to be in a band called The Sick Puppies. Um... They were pretty active. They had a couple of top 10 hits or top, no, no, no. One of them was a number one. Um, I don't know, yeah, so it was just a rock band. Uh, kind of, if I could classify, I would say it sounded like Chevelle meets, I don't wanna say Nickelback, because I don't like Nickelback, and that, it's, it's kind of an insult, but it was that kind of sound. It was radio rock that was like in drop C, you know, so it was like heavy, heavy rock, uh, hard rock music. Anyways, um, he left that band about five years ago and he started a solo career. Um, and we met about two years ago. I was, um, I, I play with Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels whenever they're on the West Coast, whenever he's on the West Coast. And um, Shim and Mitch have the same lawyer. They were both at the show, so Shim and I met and just kept in contact. And he, uh, he's, so he's launched a whole solo career. Um, the album comes out this month. Hey, it's September now. So the album comes out on, I think, the 14th or the 15th. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's who I'm on the road with right now. Uh, sorry, I keep going down. Uh, OP3, yes, the OP3, or the OP, OBP3, I think is that preamp. If I do have a preamp on my bass, on my active ones, it's the Aguilar. It's just the best sound. Shane, big Norm fan. Yeah, you and me both, dude. Uh, Isaac, really? Oh my god. Uh, I don't know what that, oh, Six Pup, yes, Six Puppy is the Aussie band, yes. Um, their basis is pretty good and she's cute. Yeah, uh, Emma, um, yeah, she was great, dude. Uh, was great. She is great. Um, she, she, I think the puppies are still on the road. 
they, they, they replaced him with the new singer. They had a new album. So, uh, yeah, yeah, she's, it, it, it's kind of actually is very daunting. This is something I never thought I would deal with, um, is I'm playing in a band where there was already a bass player. You know what I mean? Um, and so learning when we, when we do the puppies songs, cause we, we do some of Shim's new stuff, but we're playing for his fans. So we got to give them the stuff, the, the older stuff too. So I've got to play Emma's lines exactly the way that she played them. Cause they were a three piece band. So the bass parts are very prominent. It'd be like trying to play a rush, a rush tribute band, um, and rewriting Getty's lines. Like you can't do that. <laughs> you have to play in the way that he did it. Um, and so that's just something like normally when I play in a cover band or someone hires me for a gig, like I use the original recordings as a roadmap. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I'll play the part, but I'm like going to add my twist to it. But when it comes to playing their old stuff, um, I don't do that. I play it exactly the way Emma does it because that's what that's what the audience wants to see. They're they're here to you know hear the songs the way that they know them. So that's something that just uh, like I said, it's it's daunting in the sense that like, oh man, if I don't pull this off, they're gonna notice, and um, and that'll be my fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, just kind of trying to figure that out. Um, let's keep going down. Do you record the bass on the album? Yes. Yes, um, on maybe like half of the songs. Um, the other half were recorded either by Shim or they just don't have bass on them. It's one of those things where like it might just be synth bass only. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I did maybe six or seven of the cuts. It's like an 11, 11 song album or something. I'm sorry, the air conditioning just kicked on and it might be too loud. How do I turn this thing off? How do I get in here? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sorry, if the air conditioning's too loud, I can't figure it out. Uh, let me see, were there any more questions in here? Is he still playing that semi hollow in C? Absolutely. Um, he's got two Gibson 335s that we take out on the road. And I wish, I wish that Enki made these cases over here, that, that awesome thing. Uh, I wish we could put them in there because that would actually save us on some checked bags. Because if we could get Right now, we, we, we check two guitar cases for him and then two guitar, pays, two guitar cases for Pow. He's the other guitar player. and we, So that's four bags we're checking, which we could get down to two if Shim's guitars and Pow's guitars would fit in those end key cases. But I guess um, they're, they're oversized because he plays 335s and Pow plays Les Pauls. Actually, Pow's guitars, I think, would fit inside there. Um, but, yeah. Scott Dickens Dixon case or something like that. I've, I've not seen those, uh, but I'm sure it's great too. I don't know, I, I, I can't speak to it, but dude, these NQ cases are awesome. If you haven't seen the video yet, um, like I said, I think it went live about an hour, well, hour and a half ago by now. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah th th those, are, those are awesome cases, dude. I, I can't speak highly enough of it. Um, anything else, guys? Anything else you wanna know? I think I'm all caught up on these questions. I don't think I skipped over any. Did I miss anyone? Scott Dixon. Gotcha. Yeah. Anything? I'm going to try to do these uh, a little more. Well, I don't want to say more often because I haven't done any yet. <laughs> so I would like to do them often um, just to check in with you guys. And I apologize for uh, not. I, I get a lot of comments about like, hey, dude, where'd you go? I don't see your YouTube videos and stuff. I have been busy. I've been uploading content like crazy at thebasis.net. So I've been active, just not here on YouTube. And so I apologize because this is also, this is where my largest audience is um, and I haven't been fair to you guys. So I think a, a, a good way to kind of keep my face, uh, you know, in, in, in the scheme of things is to, you know, do these, these video vlogs and I'll plan them out a little bit better next time. So I'll make, I'll actually have some, some things to, <laughs> to share with you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely try to do these more often. Um, AJ says, what is that case? Take care. I'm absolutely going to. Um, it's called an N-K-I e -N AMG2. <laughs> That's the model number of it. Uh, but go, click on my channel. I, I won't explain it here because I did a much better job of it uh, in the video that went live this morning. But just click, go to my channel and there's a, uh, the, the last video updated. Um, is a product review on it, um, AJ. So I highly recommend you check it out. It's, it's way cool, dude. Um, it, it's a great case. Um, but actually, what time is it? It's 12.30 here. Yeah, I, I got to go because uh, the van's coming to pick us up in about 20 minutes. So 
I'm gonna head out. But guys, thank you so much for AJ. Awesome dude. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Uh, tell Dave I sent you. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. And like I said, I'll do these more often. Um, the next time we're playing, actually, I don't know when the next time we're playing. Today, this is the last day of the 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 tour. Um, I put that in quotes because this was just a fly date. Um, but uh, yeah, next time I'm on the road and I've got a free moment, I'll, I'll hop on here and and we'll hang. Um, anything you guys think of, you know, if you've got any ideas, any suggestions, send them my way. My email is jamie, J-A-Y-M-E, at thebassist.net. Mark, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have fun next time. So in the meantime, you guys take care and uh, have fun. I'll see you again soon, all right? Adios, everyone.